This is an overview of VeryBots. It's a cross-platform programming game for Mac, Linux, Windows, and Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi. Ships and stages are programmed in Lua. So at a high level, VeryBots is pretty similar to most other programming games I've played. You've got this 2D playing area. You've got a bunch of bots, each controlled by a separate program. The world runs in discrete time. So you've got these frames or ticks, and on each tick, all the ships get a chance to run some code. They get an updated view of what they can see on the stage, and they get a chance to decide if they want to move and or shoot on that tick. So ships have a thruster for altering their trajectory. They have a laser gun. That's the primary weapon, which they can fire frequently, and the lasers move quickly and don't do very much damage. And the secondary weapon is a torpedo gun, and torpedoes move slowly, they pass through walls and go a specific distance until they uh, explode, and when they blow up, they do damage to everything in the area. Uh, so torpedoes are harder to aim, and you can only fire them infrequently, but are potentially uh, super-duper powerful. So this is a battle stage. Uh, on this stage, the gameplay is really similar to what you see in uh, most other programming games like RoboCode or Robot Battle or Fight Code game. You have... Uh, a series of rounds. Your job is just to destroy all the other ships that you see. Rounds end when there's one ship left, and at the end of all the rounds, uh, the winner is based on some scoring formula. So in very bots, it's a combination of destroying other ships and doing damage, sort of like in Quake. So we have these battle stages, but uh, in very bots, a lot of what's going on here is being controlled by the stage. Uh, the stage is programmable in much the same fashion as ships are programmable. You have an API. Each tick, after all of the ships get a chance to run some code, the stage gets a chance to run some code, and the stage can decide when the round ends, when the game ends, sets all the scores, and he has godlike powers to move ships around or destroy them and revive them or change their energy or anything else. And he can send custom events to ships. So if we take a look, uh, among the sample stages, we have a pretty wide range of gameplay styles. We have Arcade Shooter and Drift and Vortex are all kind of single-player arcade-style games. So Arcade Shooter is loosely based on Galaga, or that style of gameplay. Drift, I would say, is loosely based on Frogger, and Vortex is kind of original. And then we have Mazes, and uh, Laser Gallery is a targeting challenge stage. And then for multiplayer stages, we have the battle stages, and we have a racetrack, which I think is self-explanatory, but we can take a look. Uh, Nightshade is not a sample bot, but he's an awesome bot uh, that can race, so he's good for showing off this stage. Another multiplayer stage is Joust. This is a movement-only stage, and you're just trying to uh, not get knocked off the sides. And we also have team battle. So this is a regular battle in all respects, except for the fact that each program gets to control multiple ships. So a stage can set the team size, and that means when the ships are initialized, when the ship programs are initialized, they get more than one ship. So to launch matches on the Raspberry Pi, um, you can do all the same stuff for the most part. But uh, there's no GUI. Uh, you launch individual matches from the command line. So this is actually running on my Mac, but with uh, the same command line interface as we have on the Raspberry Pi. So you launch a match, you get to watch it, but you don't get to do anything interactive. You can't adjust the speed, or you can't look at output consoles, or pause and play. So it's a little simplistic compared to the GUI. But uh, other than that, I think it's a pretty good experience on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, everything runs reasonably fast. Um, the Raspberry Pi was the initial target platform for BerryBots, so a lot of uh, the choices I made in the design were based on making sure it would run well on the Raspberry Pi, including like the programming languages used. So I think it's a pretty good user experience, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, yeah you'll dig it. So if we take a look at what a ship program actually looks like, you can take a look at Floating Duck, because he doesn't do anything, so he's a good skeleton program. This init function is the first thing that's called. You get a ship and a world object. The ship is what you can use to tell your ship to do anything, like fire lasers, fire its thruster. You can set its name and its colors. 
the world object is what you use to get information about the stage, like its size and where walls and zones are and uh, the current time. And if you actually intended to do anything in this ship, you would actually save these to global variables so that you can use them in the run function. So the run function is what's called each tick. You get uh, enemy ships, tells you information about all the ships that you can see, and sensors gives you information about everything else that you are aware of. So this is a bunch of different types of events, like when you see a ship fire a laser, that's a certain type of event. When you get hit by a torpedo, that's a certain type of event. When you run into a wall, that's a type of event. And uh, yeah, and stages can send custom events as well. So a stage program, for the most part, looks pretty similar. It has a knit and run. But before that, the very first thing that happens when you run a match is the stages configure function is called with this stage builder object. So this is what the stage program uses to set the dimensions, add walls and zones. You can set battle mode that lets ships fire their lasers and torpedoes. By default, uh, they can only move around. You can also set fixed starting points, like on uh, the racetrack you need that. And stages can also add their own ships. So a stage program can have its own ships, like we saw on Arcade Shooter, and you, you know, you're loading one stage and one ship, but the stage uh, brings a bunch of ships along with it. So that makes it pretty powerful, uh, gives you the ability to create some pretty sophisticated types of gameplay in your stages. So that's a look at the core Buried Bots gameplay and how programs are structured. Uh, I want to show off some other features here. Um, we have the Game Runner. This is a totally separate API that you can use to execute BerryBots matches and process the results. It comes with three samples. Um, two of these are batch style sample uh, Game Runners. These just let you run lots of matches and look at your overall scores. So you might want to check your score on Laser Gallery. So you could run one match, but uh, really there's enough variance that you need to run a bunch of matches to get a good average, so you can use this to do that. You also get to set uh, the thread count when you run a game runner that uh, will run multiple matches in parallel, and all of that is ha handled internally by BerryBots. Uh, it kind of works the way Java Futures do. You just queue matches, and then you fetch results and you just get the results as they become available. So your program is still uh, single threaded. So a game runner program just has this run function. This takes uh, a few different objects that you can use to do different stuff. The runner is the most important one. This is what you actually use to queue matches and fetch results. Form is what you use to specify what type of input you want and fetch that input. So you can see here, uh, this is batch 1P. We say we want a stage, we want a single ship, we want two integers and a checkbox. And then we call form OK. When we call form OK, that's what actually launches this uh, form right here. And so we can see that it has what we specified as inputs. And when we hit OK, that's when this returns true. And if it returns true, then we start fetching input and uh, running all the matches and printing out this output. So one of the sample game runners is this simple tourney. So you can use this to run a single elimination tournament bracket. So right out of the box, you can run tournaments with Barry Bots. You say best of whatever. It will run tiebreaker matches if it needs to and set the number of threads and whether or not you want to save replays. So saving replays in a tournament Style setting, I think, is pretty awesome. Uh, this lets you still run a tournament with an automated program. It still runs at max speed, but you're also saving all the replays from all the matches. So uh, you can still go back and watch all the matches. You can still post all the matches with the results. Um, so I think that's pretty awesome. You can take a look at uh, some of these replays. So yeah, replays are uh, the next feature I want to talk about here. Uh, you can save replays from the Game Runner API or from the results dialog if you're running matches manually. And replays are HTML files, so they're very portable and easy to post to the web. You have pretty much everything in a replay that you have when running a match through the GUI. You can pause and play, you can skip around, you have your output consoles, and you have your results. And you can peek at those early because it's a replay, but uh, they also show up at the end.
So just a couple other little features I want to show off. Uh, we have a stage preview, which actually gives you a visual preview of the stage. A description, which comes from uh, the source file. If you have a comment at the top of your stage source file, uh, it will show up here. And a little other metadata about the stage, like uh, its dimensions, info about stage shifts, and the number of walls, number of starting points. And the last feature I want to show off is uh, graphical debugging. So Snail is the only sample bot that makes use of this, but if you go into an output console and click this enable graphics, that allows the ship to draw to the screen using a simple vector graphics API. So Snail is uh, drawing the details about uh, the data structures behind his pathfinding algorithm here. So all these gray dots and lines are the grid he's constructed of valid paths around the stage. And uh, that white line that we were seeing is his intended path along uh, that grid. Here's one uh, final look for the uh, debugging graphics. We can show off Nightshade because he has some cool graphics too. So Nightshade uh, <laughs> detects when other ships fire lasers. And I can slow this down. And uh, so you can see he knows when a ship fires a laser. And that's that circle. But he doesn't know where along that circle the laser is. Uh, this in RoboCode, we call this a wave because that's uh, that's what you know about the laser is this expanding wave from the center point where they, it was fired. Um, so if you go to the browse menu, you can get to all your ships and stages and game runners and replay directories, and you also can open up the API docs. So this has all the nitty gritty details about how everything works in BerryBots. Uh, the ship and stage APIs have a lot of overlap, so they're one API here. And the game runner API is completely separate and listed down here. So if you want to write a ship, you start with ship control. A stage would start with stage control. And a game runner, you would start with runner control. So that's BerryBots. Uh, it's at berrybots.com. It's also open source under a permissive license, so feel free to crib features or use it as the core for your own programming game or whatever else you want. Uh, hope you like it. Thanks a lot.